Okay, so getting started with drip email or ECRM. So I was with Rainmaker Platform for a long time, still have multiple client sites on my reseller um, that I'll continue for the foreseeable future. But for myself and for a couple of my other clients, it just made sense to move um, to drip. And not a knock on ConvertKit or any of the other uh, tons of options that are available. But for me, I really liked how Drip was laid out. I really liked how powerful it was. I knew that like Brian Castle and Brennan Dunn and Jason Resnick, people that I respected that um, you know had been using it for years. And it just, they kept improving it. Uh, they were bought by lead pages a while back. And I watched through all of that. I wasn't using it and I just started using it. And as I was starting to set up the very first account in Drip and get everything organized for a client, it dawned on me that I was completely clueless. And I was like, well, let me see if there's any videos. And I found a couple of decent videos, but I didn't find anything that really talked about, hey, I'm getting started with Drip. Here's how I organized everything. Kind of here's the, the thought process behind it, etc. So that's what this video does. All right. So I organized the account for my client and they came in with some things, some constraints, basically, that we have to take into account. And really, it's the resources or, you know, um, yeah, resources, I guess. I can't think of the right word, but all right. So they have three points of view that they are focusing on that we're going to craft conversations with. Then we also have three email series that are around three individually, one around each of three cornerstone content topics for this website. And they have an initial product of $50 per year membership and one goal of striking up two-way conversations with subscribers. So there are a ton of options within your Drip account, features on features on features, on, you, you get the Drip. So we're only gonna focus on the ones that we absolutely need to get started. And from my mental clarity, <laughs> I ascribe these jobs for this specific account to these Drip features, okay? So Drip forms are the entrances. They're all the doorways into the building. All right. So every one is set up as an entry. And based on some advice from Brian Castle that from one of his videos that he made about drip, I'm keeping the form simple. You can automatically attach about automation and do a bunch of different stuff tied directly to the form. But I'm just using them to identify initially a general topic or point of view because of the landing page on which that form is only accessible. So the drip automation workflows are to craft pertinent customer conversations and the drip campaigns are to conduct cogent conversations. And it sounds like a bunch of gobbledygook. I get that. However, I use those words for a very specific reason and we'll get into that as we go. But the point of this is a conversation, two way conversation between a brand. In this instance, VintageAmericanWaste.com. Marianne Datesman wrote the book, uh, American Ways Intro to American Culture, the fourth edition. The point though is a conversation. And who are we having these conversations with? Well, there's gonna be multiple um, you know, points of view that you'll deal with over time. It, you, some call them avatars, whatever. I like point of view because that's a person. It's one person's point of view. And so that's what I try and kind of inform over time. So the three points of view we're talking with within Drip are educator, history buff, and ESL students. So an educator is a teacher, right? Or it could be administrators in some instances. So the e history buff, they're into history. So they have a, a load, a huge archive of our authentic artifacts from American history. It's called the Youth Companion and they also own the Gerda Rinker collection and so forth. History buffs will find the different stuff interesting, okay? Different articles, the poems, the different series that were done over the years, because it's over a hundred years worth of the Youth Companion that were put out on a month-to-month -month basis. And they had a you know section for kids. And so there's a, just loads of different interesting artifacts that are available. 
And ESL students, that largely comes from the book because a lot of ESL, English as a second language students, use the book. Everyone enters this account, like I said, through the form. Here are some examples of the form. And these are just the kind of the, the initial doorways, if you will, is kind of how I look at it. And you'll see like the book values and pledge pages, those have page because the page is actually in existence. Whereas these other forms, I went ahead and created the form, but the page is not live yet, so the form isn't necessarily, well, it's not live because nobody can access it because it's only going to be available on that one page, the, the page for educators, the page for ESL students, and the page for history buffs. So, it, and as you can see, there's no subscribers or anything yet. We're just setting up the account, right? So the general flow for this account, what we're looking for is we want people to create an account within the Drip account. They don't have to know that. They're just signing up to an email list, quote unquote. They're going to confirm their email address by, we're going to send them an, um, you know double opt-in. They click the link and voila, they confirm their email address. Now they're on the list. And now they move into the automation workflows. And what we're using those to do is we're focusing on, let's educate their personal decision as to whether or not they wanna take up our offer, which is 50 bucks a year, right? for a membership and you get access to all these worksheets and you get access to all the curated stuff we're going to continue to curate, et cetera, et cetera. We have a lot of stuff we're building in, but just the worksheets or lesson plans that are already available, there's already 11 of them. Those are easily sellable and they're going to sell them for five bucks a pop on this other um, teacher site. I'm not sure exactly what, but the point is that's 55 bucks right there and it's only 50 bucks for the year and we're going to continue to keep adding additional resources, etc. So, and we want to hear from people that decide to sign up. So that's part of the conversation that we're going to be building in to the drip account. So the automation workflows, the way that I'm kind of explaining them is that we're using them to craft conversations that customers find pertinent. And the point behind that is we don't want to oversend. We want to have a conversation. We don't want to talk at people. So everything that we send, we're taking into account that person. So we're trying to understand more about them based on consolidating all of these various actions that they can take into this drip timeline, the account activity timeline, that's how we track the relationship. And I show a, a very paltry example here because it just shows that I updated a custom, a couple of custom fields because we're just getting started. But in, and unfortunately, I Googled for, you know, pics of the latest version of the timeline and I did, I couldn't find any. So, um, as I build these out, I will definitely be publishing those as well. This is not something where it's a one-off video. I'm talking about getting started, but there's going to I'm going to continue the conversation with future videos as well. But this drip series is something that you know is very interesting to me. There's a lot of different as a digital marketing strategist, it's very interesting all the different opportunities that they create. Like I've heard a lot about conversational marketing from Drift. D-R-I-F-T, which David Cancel and I know Dave Gerhardt is the um, lead, head of marketing and so forth. Amazing brand. Love the team and really, really interesting out of Boston. And I, you know, always loved how they were, they talked about their conversational marketing because that's kind of always how I looked at sales and marketing in the past was you had to have open lines of communication. That was the point of marketing and the sales component too was you didn't want them to be pushy, rude, or not take no for an answer. You wanted them talking to the best leads that are really all that you're doing is answering their questions and then trying to simplify the process from their experience. And that's the relationship or the context that I always set up. So um, the goal is to educate their personal decision. Largely that's gonna still play out through campaigns. However, with the automation set up within Drip, that's something that I find really interesting is the, the ability and the idea of doing one-off emails based on where they are in their relationship with this brand. Okay, so here's an example of the Own the Book series, and this one is actually live, and it's five emails, and you can see the last email is 
we're starting the idea, like I want people to understand that this is a two-way conversation, but beyond that, we want to know, okay, where should we send them next? And here's the example of the history buffs. And what it does is it sends that on the book, that's the blue one there, right? But So the green is the form at the top. So you came in through the history buffs page. Now you progress down to where it's going to send them the own the book and it's going to address them as history buff in this instance. However, I think the example I'm showing is the from the educator. Yeah, so you can see they're all the same other than I'm using different terminology ideally. All right, so here is and I wanted to show you how we drill down. So here's the um, if you're editing this blue send on the book, this is a drip action. It's going to send a one-off email. We name the email and then we give it a subject line to the email and then we write out the email, etc. And they have some you know, controls that you can handle. And here's an example of the actual email, right? And then you'll see that there are basically three links. There's a, a no and then there are two yeses, one for the fourth, one for the third edition. So I wanted to show you those are trigger links and what they're doing is because they're clicking that link, we're going to tag them with do not own the book or we're going to tag them with own the book fourth edition or the third edition for that one. The goal is that we want everything to be considered, every communication that they receive to be considered pertinent. We don't want to interrupt, we want to join the conversation. And Now as far as an ending for this video, I have no idea what I should do. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say that this is the end of the video. And if you have any questions, Jason at JasonHobbsLLC.com, send me an email. Reach out to me if you have a question. And I'm going to do another video. It's going to come soon. <laughs> we'll see how soon I can get the next one out.